Known practices are now ceasing to function. This is caused by changes in the magnetic and quantum structure of the planet and the influence of new, highly potent energies from the central sun. The planet and the population that have chosen ascension are being prepared for the quantum leap. Many know this, but not everyone knows. One, readiness for transition is determined by the soul itself and no one else will decide its further destiny. Two, the preparation of the soul choosing the path of ascension is carried out by a team commissioned by the Karmic Council, specifically created for this purpose and working on the vibrations of each individual soul. This is necessary for the individual preparation of each soul as everyone's subtle bodies are different. Three, preparation takes place both during active daytime life and at night during out-of-body experiences. Work during sleep is more productive, so more time for rest is now required and not everyone feels rested in the morning. Nighttime journeys can even trigger memories during the day, but not as dreams, but as real adventures. Countless times leaving the body, we returned without thinking, what is it for? Now this is explained and the soul can carry out this work consciously. I know that many souls have already begun to remember who they are and where they came from, but most are still searching for answers. Four, the majority of earthlings are beings from other civilizations, coming from Pleiades, Sirius, and a small percentage from other aliens. But they all came wishing to undergo the quantum leap and having successfully completed it, to ascend to a higher level of development. Not everyone will be able to successfully complete these trials and some may even lose the light they have previously gained, but it was your voluntary choice. The prayer, meditations, practices, attitudes towards life and others that will be given is designed for daily use to consciously assist the soul in preparing for the transition. Any person, regardless of faith, can use this information. Only awareness of the process and faith in its successful completion are needed, which are found in the subtle fields and cannot be brought to the surface by intellect and knowledge alone. This is the feeling you've heard of before but couldn't consciously understand. Awareness implies not choosing with the mind, but choosing through the subtle planes of this path. A person's desire to move into the fifth dimension is the body's desire, while the soul's choice, which is primary, does not always coincide with this intention. Discovering the intention of your soul is the main task of the current moment. This will also be explained below. This article, as a memo, will provide a condensed scheme for preparing the individual for the process of transition, or not transition, for those who have chosen it. All information here is given in a quantum form, and despite its compactness, you will absorb the necessary information that will be useful for your work. New practices of quantum energy, such as the golden sphere, energy of fulfillment, crystal energy, are given to you to facilitate the passage of the life path, but they cannot change a person's mentality on their own. It is their individual work. The illusion that only by engaging in these practices can a person fully improve themselves. For this, many other things are needed, which will also be mentioned. People's thinking leads them into a dead end and the ego does not allow them to admit it. Finding one's path becomes both easier and more difficult at the same time, because by the present moment, readiness for the transition is very low, and it is difficult for the soul to determine its further development. Hence the confusion of feelings and emptiness of sensations, which souls fill with alcohol, drugs, and sex. It's not the fault of the soul, it's the result of an experiment that the higher beings conducted on Earth and which is now coming to an end. I say higher beings because many forces of different levels of development and with different goals participated in this. Thus, the work was organized on this planet laboratory by the Creator. I also could not intervene in this process and only now can shed light on these events. The joy of the upcoming transition is so great that souls forget about preparing for this process. The task of the article is to help the awakened ones choose the right steps for themselves, while the unawakened ones will not read it. Preparation work begins with the first chapter. 1. The state of the soul at the current moment. Each individual soul is in a different state. This depends on accumulated mistakes and lessons learned and gained in the subtle planes. Each soul has experience of communication with the Creator, but this information is closed until the moment of full awakening of the soul. 
This is done for the most effective learning process in duality and the opportunity like a springboard to then leap upward. However, this can also turn out to be a leap into another area, that is with a decrease in the level of development. 25% at the moment are in such a state and the remaining time can be used to change the situation. People who choose the path of degradation destroy their subtle bodies and as a result, their physical body. Hence, previously, unknown diseases arise and all sorts of accidental misfortunes happen to them, accidents, injuries, robberies, which are a consequence of mental degradation. The soul of such a person does not go into the fifth dimension. It will be uncomfortable there, and they may continue their evolution on another planet with a third dimensional density. And some may even end up in an animal body, but I repeat, it's the soul's choice. It realistically assesses its condition and chooses a place for further comfortable existence. For such souls, this article is not needed, but souls that have made the decision to move into a higher density will need to prepare their energy bodies for adaptation to high vibrations. How to prepare your energy shells? We will tell in the second chapter. Two, forms of preparation for the transition. When preparing for the transition, the main task is to prepare all four bodies. This work requires great efforts and energy costs. The main thing here is to change the diet towards vegetarian food, control emotions, and practice adapting all bodies to the energy of the fifth dimension. What does this mean? We must learn to perceive ourselves already in the fifth dimension. This can be done by reading affirmations. One, in the name I am that I am, I express the collective intention of my divinity to fully open in my consciousness the divine level of the fifth dimension. Two, in the name I am presence, I command all my cells, my genes, and my consciousness to shift to the fifth level of spiritual cosmic awareness. Three, in the name I am presence, I command fully to awaken love, power, and strength, which correspond to my existence in the fifth dimension and level of awareness. Four, in the name I am presence, I command all my cells, systems, and organs, my whole biological life system, to adopt the energy, let it be so. This needs to be done every day, and regardless of the preparedness of cells, gather energy from the fifth dimension. The results won't keep you waiting. You'll soon notice a change in the cellular condition of your skin. Old worn out cells will start shedding abundantly and you'll energetically feel a surge of strength. I recommend reading this before starting all practices. A call for a collective raise in vibrations. In the name I am that I am, with the permission of the Lords of Karma of the Earth, under the guidance of Sanat Kumara and the Ascended Masters, under the protection of Archangel Michael and his Legion of Angels, I address my higher essence, my golden angel, and ask to raise the vibrations of all my bodies to the level allowed to me at this stage of my consciousness development. I ask to raise the vibrations of all my bodies to the level that will benefit the development of my soul, the souls of those people and beings surrounding me, for the benefit of the entire space and for the benefit of the Earth's evolution. I thank all higher powers for their assistance. I ask Archangel Raphael to heal all my bodies and fill the healed areas with light of the color spectrum that will aid in the healing of my bodies. With an open heart, I accept the assistance provided and thank the Lords of Karma of the Earth for the permission granted by the Ascended Forces of Light to provide assistance to me and to all unascended humanity, as well as to all beings ascending the evolutionary ladder for the benefit of the entire planet Earth. I accept the changes happening to my bodies and consciously direct God's light flowing through me to the places where it's needed. Let it be so. I recommend doing this practice every day. There's no harm in it. It will help you energetically prepare yourself for the new vibrations. Also, the prayer of minimal burden on all organs works well. I'll provide it at the end. You don't need to keep a large set of prayers and meditations in your daily arsenal. You need to choose the necessary ones and read them. I would even say create them. Mindfulness and prayer should go hand in hand. Our diet greatly influences our energy. Everyone knows that humans will transition to plant-based food and draw energy from the environment, but forcing it is not worth it. It should become an internal need for a person. Although regarding diet, I won't specifically tell you anything. What you've read is quite enough. You can focus on emotions. This is a very important point. 
Emotions in our life affect everything, and even events unrelated to health depend on our emotions. Therefore, constantly remember this and use the cleansing mantra. Any negative thought, obsessive frightening situation, scenario, desire for revenge, responding with force, we say, this is not my thought, situation. I bless it, release it, and let it go with love. All people I met or talked to on the phone today, date, even for a short time, all situations I participated in today, I bless, release, and let go with love. Thus, by controlling emotions, we can change our present life and prepare ourselves for the transition. The existing practices will be effective if applied consciously, touching the deep layers of the soul. Otherwise, if your feelings don't respond, changes will only occur on the surface layers, meaning the preparation will be ineffective. The next chapter will be three. Relationships with others. Relationships with others are the result of your preparatory work, a kind of test. Based on them, you can judge how effectively you've done the work. If you have unresolved situations, regardless of who is right by earthly standards, it means that the forgiveness process is not complete and it would be good to work on forgiveness. Relax and enter a meditative state. Call upon your angels and guides, your higher self and your spirit. Express the intention for the meditation to proceed for your highest good and for the good of all. Express the intention to release any negative energy towards other people, to forgive them completely and fully. After that, perform a forgiveness meditation for each of them in turn, visualizing the person, sincerely and fully forgiving them, asking for their forgiveness, blessing them and letting go as well as forgiving yourself. Afterward, thank your higher aspects, your angels and guides, and exit the meditation. This should be done until all unpleasant feelings towards people you've had to interact with disappear. After all, you were teachers for each other and unknowingly helped each other work through the lessons you had set for yourselves. Relationships with close people are especially important because you still have karma binding you and failing to resolve this situation will multiply karma and you will return to it later. Ascending with grudges is impossible we assume that you have also resolved this and we move on to the next chapter. Four, preparation for changes in your home. The information in this chapter may be unfamiliar to you, but it has an important point. We're talking about the energy of your home. The energy of the home is related not only to the location of the house on the Earth's magnetic grid, but also to the arrangement of things. Feng Shui has a lot to say about this, the main thing is for you to understand that the arrangement of things affects psychological emotional states. If you feel uncomfortable with any object or its placement, you need to change it. This is also a hint, and without knowing the laws of feng shui, you can adjust everything to harmony. Now the veil with the subtle world is thinning, and you increasingly feel various hints from there. To prepare for the transition, it's good to have a minimum of things and a maximum of energy replenishing reservoirs. They can be religious items, crystals, or even personalized talismans. I recommend always carrying crystal balls with you. If you want to change something at home, but members of your family object, then you shouldn't do it. This means the family's energy requires it. I won't dwell on this for long, and we move on to the next chapter. Five, utilizing external assistance. During the preparation for the transition, you will receive a lot of information from the external environment. This includes intimidation and promises of the unattainable, false information distorted and intentionally leading you astray from civilizations unwilling to see your successful ascension. The most important thing is for you to evaluate any information not with your mind, but with your feelings, your heart. You've heard a lot about this, but still rely on logic without listening to your heart. No practices are needed here. Just try to feel whether this information resonates with your soul when making a choice. This is your most important and accurate guide at the moment. And most importantly, you won't need any ships. Those ready for ascension will be able to achieve it on their own. Let's move on. Six, assistance from higher powers. Assistance from your higher powers comes constantly. I say yours because everyone has their own. Your golden angel is the most important helper. This is your higher aspect, which resides constantly in pure consciousness and always knows what you need and what you don't. It has modeled your life plan and ensures that you fulfill everything planned to the maximum extent. 
That's why, in some cases, your aspirations remain unrealized. No matter how much you ask all the saints, it doesn't correspond to your own program of manifestation. Sometimes life's program changes, but it's rare. I'm talking now about the global directions of life experience, because you model the details and situations of everyday life yourselves. The general scenario can also be rewritten, but it's only the prerogative of the Creator, which He did during the preparation process for the planet's ascension. Your angel is always in contact with you, and the fact that you don't hear it is because your polluted sheath doesn't allow the subtle energy to break through. There are even cases where, due to a person's low energy, the connection with the angel is severed, and the person falls under the influence of other angels. These are cases of hexing, possession, but in most cases, it was done according to your angel's guidance. We won't dwell on this in more detail. This is a very substantial issue, and we have everything in condensed form. Information is conveyed to you quantumly. And let's move on to the next chapter. 7. Source of all life, the Sun. The Sun is the creator of everything in our solar system. Yes, you heard right, it's the Sun. Just as your planet is a living organism, so the Sun is an even more developed being. Most ascended teachers and avatars are located there. All the energy for the planets of the solar system comes from the Sun. The changes that everyone is expecting will also affect the Sun, even more so because it gives the impulse to the other planets the illusion that the sun will extinguish or explode. But the fact that a second sun will soon appear, that's true. Why do we need this information? Well, to understand that soon the center of outgoing energy will change and we will have two suns in the sky. During the preparation for ascension, meditations on the sun are very good. Just try to look at the sun, of course, without discomfort for your eyes. This will give you an additional influx of energy and rejuvenation of the body. The sun itself will decide what to do next. After transferring control to the new sun, life on Earth will become less complicated, as duality will be destroyed, and humanity will be able to breathe freely. This will happen soon, but for now, let's move on. 8. Illusions of Transition During the preparation for the transition, you have encountered many illusions. This includes the myth that there will be the end of the world, or conversely, the extreme that everyone will transition to new vibrations. These two polarities contain a bunch of scenarios that we won't consider. The reality is this. 1. Transition is an objective reality, and it will happen regardless of anything or anyone. Transition or ascension is the opportunity for the evolution of the planet Earth and humanity. 3. The opportunity to evolve is given to all beings, and each entity can take advantage of this offer to the extent necessary for its soul. 4. After the elevation of Earth's vibrations, the planet will continue to exist in two dimensions for some time, until the final separation of people into entities of the new race and people who continue to live in the material world. 5. All changes will be completed by 2018, and thereafter, the planet will only be highly vibrational and ultimately, it will be the planet of the sixth race. It is very important that at the time of Earth's ascension, the energetic readiness of people who have chosen their path of development corresponds to the new vibrations. This is the main purpose of the article, to help people change their vibrations without daily work and without resolving the issue of hostility in relationships with others, and especially with close people, raising vibrations is impossible. The readiness of the soul will be manifested in the harmony of the individual. It is self-sufficiency in what exists at the present moment and love for all manifestations of the Creator. And now let's consider. 9. Possibility of Rapid Transition Now much is written about the possibility of a rapid transition. This implies a sudden change in one's structure. If you have the energy of a master like Jesus, then of course you can, but otherwise it's impossible. There is only one way, through raising your vibrations. Another proposed option is to ascend on a rescue ship to a new dimension. But you understand that the energy there won't change, and according to the law of correspondence, where will you be able to go? I don't want to dwell on this anymore. Let's move on to the next chapter. 10. Fear. During the transition, most people experience anxiety when they really start to consider this process. Anxiety is a natural process, but there should be no fear for the supernova event. When a person experiences fear, 
their energy drops sharply. It goes to entities feeding on fear. All processes are blocked and the possibility of spiritual development stops. I won't even mention ascension. This should be constantly remembered and any fear should be expelled by the program. Ask the higher powers from the central primordial source to remove from all your lives, incarnations, manifestations from parallel worlds. All fears, programs, energies, connections, interfering with the establishment of a happy life here and now, to the extent and at the speed comfortable for you. The freed space asks to be filled with new crystalline energies, light, love, health, joy, abundance, spiritual wealth, happiness, and whatever else you want. It's impossible to remove everything at once. You must definitely cleanse all life plans as they are interconnected, and there is an exchange of energies between them. In addition, the cleansing process must be repeated as you are intensively evolving and new programs, fears, that are no longer needed for your development constantly appear. This practice is very effective and will help prepare for the transition and most importantly, to restore normal life in the present moment because fear programs prevent positive programs from unfolding, creating happiness and joy for us. Having finished with the fears, let's move on to chapter 11 about the world arrangement and the moment here and now. We won't discuss Cosmo Energetics now. We need its separate moments for the questions we are discussing. We can consider the ascension process tomorrow in the present moment. If we don't forget that linear time exists only in our third dimension and there is none above it. Therefore, everything is concentrated in the moment here and now, the past, the future, and we can manage both the past and the future from the present moment. Yes, strange as it may sound. However, it should be noted that not everything can be changed. It depends on the amount of free energy available. And even with sufficient energy, there are areas where only the Creator can intervene. This is your karma, which can only be worked out. This is your life plan that you have chosen for yourself and many other factors. But what can be adjusted? You can appeal to the keepers of time and ask to be transferred to past or future events. I ask the keepers of time to synchronize me, state the date and time needed. Thank you. The code, key for interacting with the keepers of time, is the horizontal infinity sign, which when placed slightly above your heart center and rotated, creates the opportunity for you to move through time to the space where you need to do work or make corrections. Note, in this way, you can synchronize with the past, rotating the horizontal infinity sign to the left, or the future, rotating the horizontal infinity sign to the right. This will allow you to conduct meditation simultaneously with like-minded individuals and correct what is possible in the past. You will learn about the possibility of adjusting the future later when you become multidimensional beings. And now let's talk about karma, 12. Karma karma is the most researched topic but not fully understood by everyone. People have always been drawn to learn more about possible punishments for past sins this is usually how karma was understood. Although the law of karma was developed by you before incarnating into duality, it served as a safety rope in case of playing in the three-dimensional world. In other words, it's a mechanism that prevents you from wasting the level of development previously accumulated, as you have to earn back the light previously spent through suffering. If the law of karma did not work, humanity in duality would have long been lost. So judge for yourself how punitive it is. However, karmic debts must be worked out, and from incarnation to incarnation, a person repeats the same lessons, unwilling to pass them correctly and leave a record in their capsule, which stores all the information about the soul. You cannot ascend to higher dimensions with karmic debts, so the lords of karma have burned all old debts. But in the subtle fields, there are elements of programs causing suffering and illness, which can be cleansed in the same way as the cleansing of subtle bodies from fears. And of course, try not to accumulate new karma, and we move further along the path of preparing for the transition to new vibrations. 13. Life in the body or without it. The physical body is our material shell, and after death, we shed it like unnecessary ballast and move towards the light. But now, during the ascension, we have the opportunity to undergo the transition in our bodies. But is this necessary for everyone? The condition of many people's bodies is such that restoring their shell may require a large amount of energy and restoration becomes impractical in this case. 
After all, this energy of the soul can be spent on other important purposes. In this case, a person undergoes instant death and simultaneous rebirth, and the body retains its previous outlines already restored. But many will be restoring their bodies during the ascension process. Some souls have this, in fact, is not so important. What's more important is to align your subtle bodies, but the choice, as always, is up to the soul. The next section will be dedicated to 14. Ideal Ascension Form The ideal form implies ascension in a dream. A person falls asleep and wakes up in new vibrations. The choice of the form of transition is determined by the soul. It knows its state and needs best and chooses the optimal option. And finally, we come to the main point. 15. Practical Advice and Recommendations for Ascension The main advice is that one must prepare accordingly for ascension. We have covered the questions that need to be addressed, but a very important topic has been overlooked. The use of magical practices and rituals. Magic has always been prohibited. Even white magic was not welcomed by the holy people. The answer is simple. Magic is the alteration of the divine plan. No one can do better than the Creator. And ultimately, it will not serve the greater good, which means it will lead to sin. In preparation for a gentle ascension, some websites suggest using the power of white magic, which is categorically not recommended, as it can destroy the psyche, deprive a person of life force, and lead them astray from the right path. In other words, the ascension process is the prerogative of the Creator, and any attempts to facilitate or accelerate this process will bring more harm than benefit. 16. Anticipation of Ascension We all eagerly await important events, and the ability to wait is an important lesson in every soul's program. I should clarify that every soul, to some extent, needs this lesson. While awaiting the ascension process, everyone expresses impatience differently. This includes a desire to speed up the timing of events, impatience to know the script, and a million questions about who will go where afterward. Human impatience consumes a lot of energy and weakens any process. The desire to control the situation interferes with spiritual development and subjects the person to moments of unpleasant anticipation. The best way to wait is not to think about the outcome. Deprived of the energy of expectation, the process goes smoother. For those who find it difficult to not wait, there is a good meditation for waiting. Here we sit, close our eyes, breathe through our nose. We focus on the area below the nostrils, above the upper lip, Tune into the breath, start observing it, attentively, consciously, continuously. We breathe naturally, not trying to control the breath, as it is not a breathing exercise. We simply focus on the natural flow of breathing. We observe the breath as it is right now, at this moment, and step by step our mind comes into balance, like muddy water in a glass gradually settling and becoming clear. After some time, the mind becomes more balanced, a sense of harmony and some special inner comfort arises. Then it gradually strengthens and turns into a feeling of joy and peace. Throughout the day, we remain in a state of inner peace, despite everything, and the question of waiting for the event no longer oppresses us. The next important point in our time is 17, finding like-minded individuals. Here we will talk about how we choose our companions. Seemingly a simple question, but the answer is ambiguous. During communication, we exchange energies, and the energies of dubious people can unbalance you for some time. Therefore, when choosing someone to communicate with, pay attention to how your heart perceives them. This will help save a lot of energy needed for recovery after communication. The selection of like-minded individuals can be based on the idea of moving towards the light and simply on the feelings of the soul. The presence of new friends indicates a change in the circle of acquaintances. 18. Play, exaltation, money. There is no person who would not want to have money. This is a natural human need to live well. But why have all esoteric seekers been warned against having a lot of money? The answer is simple. The energy of money ties a person to the material world. The same thing happens during moments of rejoicing and winning in gambling games. Of course, I'm not suggesting that everyone should live in poverty, but finding the optimal balance in these matters is crucial. Let's move on. 19. New in esoterics. New things in esoterics emerge every day, and there's no point in retelling everything. Let's focus on the unclear points. What was my past experience? 
Everyone asked themselves this question and searched for an answer. But is it necessary? Besides satisfying curiosity, it won't give anything. All souls have gone through various experiences. That's the meaning of life on Earth. No one managed to bypass any scenario. Therefore, the indicator can be the age of the soul, the amount of accumulated light, and the aspiration towards the Creator. I suggest evaluating your circle based on these positions, and it will become clear to you who is close. What's new here is that these three positions can accurately characterize your circle, and if you have an interest in communicating with an underdeveloped soul, this is an indicator of your choice. Measurements can be done with a frame, pendulum, or intuitively. Then let's consider 20. Transition Prayer This is why we started writing this article. Yes, this is a real prayer and very energetically demanding. We lie on our back and breathe to calm the body. You can use prana breathing. Then we tune into a connection with the Creator. You can imagine it as a stream of golden light. You should feel this connection. It may manifest as warmth in your palms or head, or you may hear a voice, but it's not necessary. Then you start addressing, Lord and Creator of all that is, I address you by the right of the laws established by you in nature. I ask you, Omniscient, to modify my life plan considering my sacred soul's decision to ascend. Create a new time for me and teach me the correct perception of new energies so that there are no nominal distortions in the space of creation. I am ready to present my light and reunite as a particle of creation, the spirit that vivifies me. I implore you, beloved, do not let me vanish into the void and allow the joy of unity to serve the good of all your children, love bestowing upon all souls in the universe. Then let's discuss 21. Life in the Fifth Dimension There's a lot of information on this topic now. Let's focus on the new points. Life and creativity in the fifth dimension are radically different from life in the third dimension. The main difference will be that in the fifth dimension, there will be no duality, and there won't be forces that constantly test you on lessons planned by your soul before incarnation. This means that all diseases, troubles, and other negatives won't be present there. Your life will be a creative laboratory. You won't lack anything. You'll be able to create everything you need for yourself. Levitation and telepathic communication, all of this will be available to you. As you understand, possessing such abilities, a person must have a high level of spiritual development. That's why we now recommend the transition prayer as a tool that changes your lifestyle and allows you to prepare and transition to the fifth dimension smoothly. I sincerely hope for your willingness to work productively.